next level. What's up, YouTube? It's Mark here from Next Level Tech and Android TV Tips. Today's a little bit different uh, style of a video, doing a, a an overtop shot because I'm going to be talking about a couple different uh, items or products. Um, uh, today I'm talking about how to build a hundred terabyte home media center. Uh, some people might uh, have a lot of uh, media files that they want to share across their network or access outside of their network. And a lot of people have heard of things like Plex, which is an application that allows you to access your content uh, through your network or outside of your network. Um, <clears throat> So basically, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences of getting a NAS drive, uh, like something from Synology versus building your own home media center. Um, uh, the reason that I really started looking into this is because the transcoding that's generally coming out of a NAS drive like Synology is not that powerful. Um, a lot of these devices, these NAS devices, uh, are great for you know being a standalone device running 24/7 on the side. Uh, but processing-wise, they typically range from um, two to 2.5 gigahertz in regards to the processor, and are typically dual to quad core. Um, they also typically have between four to eight gigs of RAM. Uh, but if you're going with a NAS drive that it is on kind of the higher end scale. 2.5 gigahertz and 8 gigs of RAM you're looking at spending well over a thousand dollars just for the enclosure not talking about the hard drives um, so I'm going to talk about a setup that uh, I was looking at and I also have a budget setup that pretty much does the same thing as the one that I'm going to show you today uh, the budget setup starts at about 582 US dollars um, and that'll give you uh, a six bay hard drive enclosure and maxed out at 100 terabytes. So the one that I built today, it, uh, it estimates to about 800 USD, depending on if you get sales or not. But you can, like I said, you can do the same build with some of the budget parts. I have everything documented on AndroidTV.tips in the blog section. So if you wanted to go through all of the different suggested budget parts uh, versus the parts that I'm showing today, you're more than welcome to do so. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys is the case that I had chosen. Um, this is an ITX case, which means that it uses a smaller form factor of motherboards. Um, so I'll show you quickly the outside. This is obviously the top of the case. It has some ventilation here. <clears throat> it also, on the sides of the case, it has mesh ventilation here. Um, the back you can see it has the fan here for the case it also has a couple settings for low medium and high depending on what you want to set your fan to this is where your io would go um, in regards to your usb ports your display ports everything else like that your power for the power supply and your uh, pci slots would go here right um, the other side is the same thing underneath it does also have uh, a mesh vent which is kind of neat it makes it really easy easy to clean if it collects dust or whatnot so this is a a really a really nice case that i thought that i had picked up um it relatively wasn't that expensive i believe uh in the states you can pick this up for about 100 100 usd maybe less i can double check the price here yeah, so in the States, this case uh, goes for $90. It's called the, it's made by Fractal, Fractal Designs. It's called the Node 304. So I'm going to pop off the top here and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so the top is off. So we can see here, um, these three uh, hard drive enclosures are two bays each. So you can put in six hard drives, six SATA drives. Um, it's... It's pretty compact in here, but it, you're able to cram in everything that you need uh, if you get the right parts. This is an ITX uh, case, so as long as you get an ITX board, then you should be good. So I'll show you the board that I had chosen to go with this. Okay, so uh, this is the Aorus made by Gigabyte. It's the X570 Aorus Pro with Wi-Fi. Um, it says it's AMD Ryzen 3000 ready, and uh, this is one of the reasons I went with the X570 board. Uh, these are the newest boards that came out for the AMD platform. Um, they are more compatible with the newer gen processors that are coming out now. 
Uh, I could have went with a B450 and saved s some money. Uh, a lot of the B450 boards that are coming out now are also uh, compatible with the newer Ryzen CPUs as well. Uh, however, I wanted to make sure that this was future ready if I ever wanted to upgrade the CPU. Um, as well as anything else, I wanted to make sure that I was getting uh, the best of the best. Usually when I'm uh, looking at building a PC, I don't want to cheap out on something like the motherboard uh, because the motherboard is the last thing that I would want to change in the future. It's just generally everything just plugs into the motherboard. Everything else is generally pretty easy to swap out if I need to. Um, <clears throat> so this is the Oris <clears throat> X570 Pro Wi-Fi made by Gigabyte. And I'll show you guys, this board is extremely compact and really nice. So we'll take a look, we'll take it out of the packaging, and I'll show you guys a size comparison so you guys can really see um, how small of a motherboard this really is. All right, so I'm just gonna put it back in the box here so you guys can see. All right, so if we're looking at this, just to show you guys the size comparison, I have an uh, Android box in a box here, and you guys can see if I put it right there, you can see the size of the motherboard. It's not very much larger than a box of an Android box, <laughs> just to show you guys the size. Um, but this motherboard for the size and what it gives you is, I think, pretty insane. Um, <clears throat> pretty compact. So what you're looking at here is your your uh, your hard drives are going to plug into your SATA ports on your motherboard. So right here on this side here, those four ports right there are your SATA ports. Uh, your RAM is going to go into here. So this motherboard can only hold uh, two sticks of RAM. However, you could go 32 gigs per stick if you really wanted to go nuts. However, in this situation, anything between 8 to 16 gigs is generally more than enough. Uh, with using the CPU I'm going to be using, you generally want to go at least uh, 8 or 16. Um, in this uh, scenario, I'm starting with 8, but I will be upgrading it to 16 in another week or so. Um, <clears throat> and I'll talk more about the RAM when I get to the CPU. Uh, so this is a fantastic, fantastic uh, board for doing a build like this. Uh, I know that it only has the four ports that you can see there for SATA uh, for your hard drives. Um, however, your PCI slots... Uh, which are here, your PCI slot uh, can uh, do a, P Sorry, a PCI to SATA uh, expansion. So you could plug in uh, an expansion card there and I think minimum they go and add at least two additional ones, right? We only need six, so you'd get a PCI expansion card and you'd plug it in there for two additional SATA uh, ports. They usually go for around 15, 20 bucks US. And that's how you would get uh, to be able to plug in six uh, drives directly into this board. Um, for additional space, now right now, right now um, the largest retail hard drives on the market are 16 terabytes. So if you do 16 terabytes times the six bays that we would have, then you're looking at uh, somewhere around 96 terabytes in space. Now I know that we said that we can get you 100 terabytes. Now the way that you would do that is this board also has room for two more M.2 uh, hard drives. M.2 hard drives are really, really small. They're the newest kind of hard drives. They're a flash hard drive, and they uh, the, they <clears throat> would be screwed onto the uh, motherboard. This motherboard has two places where you can put an M.2 drive. Uh, one would be right here. Uh, you would slide it right in there and just screw it in with that screw. And the second one on this board here is right underneath this fan. So you'd have to remove this fan and then put in the second M.2. And M.2 currently max out at two terabytes each. So two times two terabytes is four terabytes for plus 96 terabytes that you would get from your SATA hard drives uh, would equal a total of 100 terabytes. And that is exactly how you would get 100 terabytes of space out of a little tiny board like this, which I think is absolutely insane. So I'm gonna put the, the uh, motherboard away and then we're gonna talk about some of the other parts. Um, but this is, like I said, this is the, um, 
This is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus AMD uh, ITX board. It goes for about 220 US. Uh, the budget option that I recommended on the blog on AndroidTV.tips uh, was the... Um, the Gigabyte 450, the B450. Uh, it's pretty much the same board, uh, the older version on the B450 platform, um, and that one runs you about $120, so you're looking at saving 100 bucks if you wanted to go with um, an older motherboard or a lower end motherboard. Um, and you would still be able to get the same performance out of it, right? All right, All right so this is the Ryzen 5 uh, 3400G. All right. Now, the reason that I went with this is obviously compact um, in regards to doing the build inside of a small case. Um, this is what you would consider an APU. Um, the APU means that it's uh, an all-in-one um, processor pretty much. It has your processing power as well as your graphics built in. So uh, this is a great processor. It's Ryzen's um, newest APU, which like I said, is the all-in-one graphics and processing power built into one little small chip. And uh, to be very honest, um, the, the video performance that you're getting out of a, a, a CPU these days is, is very sufficient. Uh, unless you're trying to game in 4K. Uh, so generally, uh, I've been pretty happy with the performance of the APUs from Ryzen. Even the last generation one um, in my current PC, which I'm recording on right now, is using the Ryzen 5 2400G, which is the previous version of this one. Um, so, I mean, I can take it out of the box and I can show you guys really quickly what this looks like, but I mean, CPUs are CPUs. Uh, generally, this CPU will come with a sufficient cooler uh, in regards to what you need, you wouldn't have to get an aftermarket cooler for this, but um, so you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that good, but there is the Ryzen 5 CPU. It comes with the little sticker. Sorry, it's out of focus, um, but this little chip will give you both your uh, processing power as well as your video and graphics. Uh, it's really neat. Um, it comes with a really, uh, I think they upgraded the cooler for this version of the processor as well. I believe this is the prism, but I could be wrong. Let me see. Is this the prism? Does it say? I'll double check the box, but uh, yeah, so this is this is definitely a sufficient cooler for uh, the application that we're using it for. Now, if you guys are going to be overclocking your CPU or doing mass gaming, then I would recommend upgrading the uh, the fan. But for what we're doing, then definitely this is good enough for that. All right, let me get this away. And then we'll talk about the processor a little bit more. So uh, anytime you're going with an APU versus um, a standalone uh, CPU and a graphics card separately, you generally want to go with a little bit more RAM. And the reason is, is that usually between one and a half to two gigs of your RAM usage will be used for vi uh, video processing. So just keep that in mind. But generally, I've been running um, on my current build both 8 and 16 gigs on that, and it was able to run uh, very light tasks perfectly fine. Um, if you're only going to be using this as a home media center and you're not going to be using it for any other purposes, generally you can get away with 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, if you do want to use your home media center for anything else besides being a home media center, then definitely I would go with 16 gigs of RAM. And generally 16 gigs of RAM is expensive at all these days, but we'll talk about that in a second. This processor is definitely a good bang for your buck. You're looking at, I believe, around $140 US for this processor. And generally, uh, compared to buying a CPU and a pro uh, CPU and a, a GPU or a graphics processor separately, you're saving a lot of money doing that, right? Uh, I mean, you can go with cheaper options Options in regards to a CPU if you really wanted to maybe get something for around a hundred bucks if you wanted to um, but then you would have to buy a graphics card and any half decent graphics card is generally going to go for a minimum of 150 200 bucks so this is definitely why I go with this I mean you're not going to be able to game at 4k on this but that's not the point right um, the reason uh, that 
I really went this route is because it does give me a, a clock speed or processing power of about 3.7 gigahertz um, in regards to that. So comparing it to something like the Synologies and the other um, NAS drives that usually clock in about 2 to 2.5 gigahertz, this is giving you a lot more processing power. And what that means is that when you're transcoding streams or if you're trying to connect several users at one time to your media center, this will definitely be a lot more powerful to be able to handle those tasks sufficiently, right? Or definitely, in my personal opinion, a lot better than some of these uh, NAS drives, right? And um, yeah, so this is the processor that I've gone with in this setup, and I believe that it is a great value and bang for your buck. So let me just get this away, and then we'll move on to RAM. We'll talk about RAM. It's one of the easiest things to install when you're doing uh, a new build. So, I mean, you generally, when you're doing any kind of RAM setup, you wanna go with two sticks, which is called dual channel. Um, these clip right into your motherboard. It's very, very simple. Uh, right here, I have two four gig sticks. Uh, these are some of the old parts that I had laying around, um, but I do have a, a pair of 16 gig RAM sticks that I will be swapping out once I get rid of my old PC setup. I will be taking it out of there and putting it there. But for now, when I do this build, I will be using old parts. And this is a great segue to say, if you have old parts or an old computer, generally it's gonna be a lot more powerful than some of these non drives right so you could use old parts if you wanted to and that way you would save a lot of money doing a whole media center build right um, so uh, the one that I'm going to be swapping out for is a pair of uh, G skills it's not these ones uh, but you can generally get the G skills um, the ones that I show on Android TV tips for about $69 for uh, 16 gigs of RAM. And I mean, that's more than enough that you're gonna need, uh, but more RAM is always better. And uh, for $69 for 16 gigs of RAM comes in two sticks of eight, uh, that's a great buy. Um, this is parts from my old computer and I believe you could probably go for uh, two sticks of four gigs for probably around 40 bucks, uh, maybe cheaper if you get them on sale, uh, but this is, uh, completely up to you how you want to do your build. Uh, I'm starting off with two 4 gig RAM sticks. That's a total of 8 gigs of RAM and then I will be upgrading later on to 16 gigs uh, from um, another PC teardown that I do. Um, so yeah, so RAM about 60 bucks, 70 bucks depending on which route you choose to go with. Next on the list would be uh, my hard drive. So in regards to a hard drive, they have gotten a lot smaller. This is what you call an M.2. And this is what I was showing you guys. It was the flash stick of uh, uh, hard drive or flash stick of memory that goes into the motherboard. And the motherboard that I showed you, it has the two slots on the front and the back of the board that gets screwed in. And just to show you guys the size of these hard drives. So this one here that I, I picked up, I was going to be doing another PC build. And I decided to do this home media center uh, instead. So this is why I have this part, but generally with the whole media center build, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't use a one terabyte as my main drive. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to max out the full potential of, you know, your hard, uh, hard drive space on your board, then you would go with the two terabytes on each side, like I said, but, um, to me it's, it's not really needed. So I'll show you guys the size of a one terabyte M.2 drive. They're actually really tiny and compact. It's pretty impressive what they've been able to do with uh, hard drive space. So this is the 970 uh, Evo from Samsung. It's rated to be one of the top uh, uh, M.2s on the market, but these are completely tiny little flash uh, hard drives. Um, it's insane how much space they can fit onto stuff these days. Just to give you an idea, um, this is a Fire Stick remote and this is the M.2 drive next to it. So, I mean, it's it's insane, right? So this M.2 hard drive, uh, it goes for, let me just check my prices, um, about $220. Now that's quite a bit to spend on a hard drive. Uh, like I said, this was um, something that I had for another build. Um, but I decided to use it on this build here. Now you could go for cheaper options and something that I would 
typically say if you wanted to go for a cheaper option just for your boot drive would be something like the um, the Western Digital Black, which is uh, 250 gigs, and they go for about $63. And that will greatly increase your booting times um, in regards to uh, when you're starting up the device and how the operating system runs. Uh, flash drives will always be faster, uh, M.2 drives, than your typical SATA drives or your mechanical drives. So it is always highly recommended if you're doing a new build these days to, um, to use something like an M.2 or a solid state drive and SSD uh, when you're doing a build, right? Um, if you wanted to max out the uh, hard drive space and get you know the top of the line of everything, then you would go with a two terabyte M.2. Uh, the cheapest two terabyte that's almost comparable to your 970 Evos from Samsung would be something from Seagate called the Fire Cuda. Those are generally uh, a lot cheaper than the Samsungs. They're a little bit slow, uh, slower on the read and write speeds, but to be honest, you probably wouldn't notice a difference, especially if you're using it in um, a media centered uh, build, right? So those are some options there. The Western Digital Black, the 250 gig uh, for your budget build runs about $63. So if you're really looking to you know, do a basic set up with a home media center for a build then that's a great option in regards to uh, a budget western digital is a great brand highly recommended um, so by no means are you cheaping out by going with the western digital black 250 gig for about 63 dollars all right so we've talked about our case we've talked about our motherboard we've talked about ram we've talked about the hard drive and now the only thing left to talk about really in regards to parts would be our power supply. Um, so this is a power supply from Seasonic. And this is um, an 80 plus gold. Now, um, if you're going with any power supplies, you're going to want to make sure that it says 80 plus and I would generally recommend to go with a gold. Um, when you look at power supplies, you're going to th see things like bronze, silver, gold, uh, platinum, titanium, all these names that can be pretty confusing. Basically, the higher classification, the uh, better quality that's generally in there and the longer guarantee that you're gonna get from your manufacturer in regards to warranties, right? So gold is generally where I start from. I don't usually go with bronze or uh, silver. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them by any means. And the power supplies generally will last longer than your build or that you plan on keeping your build. So you can see, um, can kind of see um, so this is an 80 plus gold and it's rated for 10 years warranty which is uh, which is great I mean I don't plan on having any build for 10 years because I do like to upgrade my systems so this will definitely last longer uh, than the build that we're doing um, so generally I would say go with a minimum of a 550 uh, watt power supply it should be more than enough when it comes to running um, everything that you want to throw out this build. So I mean, if you're going to be running six bays, you know, your two M.2s um, and everything else that you're putting in there, this would be more than enough power to do so, uh, minimum. I also recommend if you're going to go with a power supply, especially with an ITX case, to make sure that it's fully modular. So you can see it written there. Um, and what that means is that all of the cables that plug into this power supply can be removed. They're not hardwired into the power supply. So if there's any cables that you don't need, you don't need to put them into this build, right? So for instance, in this build, we're not using a dedicated uh, graphics card. So the cable that would go from your power supply to your graphics card is not needed and does not need to clutter up space inside of your case which means fully modular power supplies are great for cable management you just get rid of the cables that you don't need so this is a great um, power supply uh, it's a great brand very well trusted and this power supply goes for about $130, um, which I think is a pretty good price for a power supply that's, that's you know, made by a good brand, comes with a 10 year warranty, and you really don't want to cheap out on a power supply because once that goes, that your whole system won't work, right? So um, a budget option would be something like a thermal take, uh, 650 watts, ATX, 80 plus gold as well. It's fully modular and it goes for about 100 bucks. Um, so you're saving about 30 bucks if you wanted to go with the thermal take and I mean you're getting pretty much the same thing uh, a little bit more wattage made by a different brand or $30 cheaper so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, 
So that's the power supply. It's pretty amazing uh, these days that all you really need to build a PC is, um, I mean, your power supply, uh, your hard drive, <laughs> your RAM, uh, your CPU, right? Let me just close this up. So we'll get the CPU here. And your motherboard. This is all you guys need these days to build a PC, which is pretty uh, impressive. You know what I mean? Um, you don't need uh, a, a graphics card, so that removes a lot of space from within your build. But once you get your motherboard in, you put your CPU, your add your hard drive, your RAM, and your power supply, and you got a computer. That's insane. Now keep in mind, um, this build is very, uh, it's a very compact build. It is a very basic and powerful build, and it has a lot of room for upgrading. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to mention, when you are installing your um, M.2 drive, uh, you're gonna wanna have a USB uh, thumb drive. Uh, it can be any brand, it doesn't matter. It can be a 2.0, 3.0, it doesn't matter. Um, some people say that they have better compatibility when you're doing it with a 2.0 drive, um, but I mean, um, it should work either way. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do, if you don't have Windows on a CD or a DVD or, or another thumb drive, you're gonna wanna get one and then you're gonna create a bootable version of Windows. And you would do that by um, typing into a search engine, uh, Windows creation tool and you would download that software and then it would walk you through the steps of creating an installation um, a bootable USB thumb drive, right? Um, and then from what I found, generally if you went onto Windows, um, their website to purchase it, uh, it's gonna cost you somewhere around $140 for the home version and you can actually save money by um, purchasing it uh, like a DVD version of Windows um, from a retail outlet, right? You would just go buy the DVD version, even if your uh, build doesn't have an optical drive. And then once you boot the new um, the new build um, from your USB creation tool that you create, uh, it will ask you for the serial number, and at that point, you would just open up your DVD copy of Windows, rip out your serial number, and then you would put that in. So you wouldn't actually need to use the DVD um, for anything besides the serial number inside of it. And usually you can find those on sale uh, at your local retailers for about 120 bucks. So by doing it this way, you're saving 20 bucks, even though you're buying a DVD that you're not gonna use. I know it sounds weird, but that's just another way of saving 20 bucks, guys. So I hope this kind of video and this style of video, I know it was a little bit different, but you guys were able to learn something. Um, if you guys want to see the build after I complete it, um, it's not going to be a pretty build. It's not meant to, you know, have a bunch of RBG. It's really just meant to be a home media server or center, and it really serves that purpose. Um, it's a nice little case to be tucked away and not really be paid attention to, and it has a lot of potential if I wanted to upgrade it and use it for something uh, different later on in the future. Um, if you like this kind of video, guys, my name is Mark from Next Level Tech and Android TV Tips. Make sure to check out the blog and do a full in-depth breakthrough of all the parts and the budget parts and how much they cost. Um, generally, that's just for the build, and like I said, this build uh, gives you the ability to do a maximum of 100 terabytes in regards to space and even on the budget or the parts that I had picked up, it's the same turnout. It's gonna have the same performance and uh, for the budget, it's gonna be about 582 uh, US dollars and for the build that I picked up, it's gonna be about 869 US dollars. Um, now that's just for the build. Your hard drives are generally the most expensive things when it comes to building a, a NAS drive or a home media center. And the hard drives that I usually recommend going with is something like the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro. Um, the Pro versions of the NAS drives are generally uh, rated better. They have better quality uh, parts put into them and they're rated to last longer, right? NAS drives are meant to be run 24 seven and they can be used across the board in your PC, home media center, or in your NAS drive enclosures. Um, so like I said, a Seagate Iron Wolf Pro, as well as the Western Digital uh, Red, 
Pro are the two drives that I usually go with if you're going to be putting hard drives um, into your builds then you want to kind of keep them the same brand and the same size just so that if you wanted to set up uh, a backup in RAID then you can do so uh, if one of your hard drives fails then your data is still backed up right um, let's see uh, I think the the highest on the market is the Seagate um, uh, 16 terabytes um, so if you wanted to do that and go completely all out, but the hard drive that I had picked up to start with is the Western Digital Red Pro 10 terabyte, and those usually go for, I believe around 350 $400 just for one hard drive. Um, like I said, the hard drives are definitely the most expensive parts when it comes to your home media center. But that's the whole purpose of building a home media center. So if you're going to be doing it, then you don't want to cheap out on your hard drives whatsoever. So guys, if you like videos like this, if you like the explanations that I do, uh, make sure that you check out the description of this video and you follow on all of the different social media platforms. Take a look at the Facebook groups, Telegram groups, uh, follow me on instagram to keep in touch guys make sure you be a part of the community and i think i'm going to ask you this uh when was the last time that you commented on a video uh, i'm gonna start encouraging you guys to comment on videos i don't care if it's my videos but anybody's videos um that it's one of the ways sorry that um the algorithm likes YouTube channels. So it's another way of you showing appreciation to your favorite YouTubers. Uh, just a simple comment, you know, thank you, thanks for the video, um, it was really interesting, or, you know, I completely disagree with you, I hate your explanations, I hate the videos that you put out, doesn't matter. YouTube just wants to see that people are commenting and interacting with videos, and if you like the content or you hate the content, let your favorite YouTuber know. This has been Mark from Next level tech and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.